So the shelves for on the forge are gonna be 24 inches wide, eight inches deep, and then there's a three inch step that wraps around on the side of the forge. And these are made out of eighth inch steel. Face plates on the forge are 16 inches wide, 12 inches tall. It has an eight inch wide by eight inch tall opening. And it is made out of 3 16 steel. Then the piece of sheet metal that's gonna be wrapped around the outside of the two face plates is 33 and an eighth long and 18 inches wide. I will now put a mark at every inch to bend it in a nice even radius.
is gonna align the top part of the forge with the bottom tray. These are getting welded on the top. These are getting welded on the bottom. And it'll help align and make sure the top doesn't move around. So the ribbon burner I'm going to be using is 10 inches long by 4 inches tall and it has 43 quarter inch holes in it. The body of the ribbon burner is made out of 4x4 four four steel tubing and it's just a 2 inch pipe welded onto it. There's no baffles or nothing. It just hits the back wall and disperses and mixes evenly. So the air is being controlled by a two inch gate valve. Then the gas, the main shutoff is gonna be a three eighths ball valve. Then to fine tune it, it's a quarter inch needle valve and it's just a quarter inch pipe going right in. There's no MIG tip or nothing. I put a spiral mixer inside the pipe. That way the air and gas mix correctly and it burns evenly. Here's some other things I added to the forge that I didn't film. First is a lifting point, then the forge burner brackets, and a steady rest that is flush with the top when it's pushed in and it pulls out and it has a stop under there so it can't pull out and fall out. Thanks for watching. Make sure to come back for part three because in that video, we're going to be pouring the refractory and get this thing running.